Uh, Martin will introduce our next award winner. Bless you. Thank you, William. Uh, I've been, I've been, I was just having a conversation with Jackie. It's not you again. I was just having an interesting conversation with the, the guest sitting next to me, and she said that I should speak from the heart tonight. So I've actually just chucked away what I was going to say. And it's very easy to speak from the heart about this particular person because she's been a dear friend of mine for at least 10 years. When I go to Lebanon, she's the first person I go to to find out what's happening. It's a... Um, okay, this was prepared, but somebody, <laughs> somebody said to me um, a few years ago, Lebanon's like... A, to understand the politics of Lebanon is, is like looking at a spider's web seen through a kaleidoscope. It's very compelling. It's quite beautiful. <laughs> um, it changes all the time. But the main thing is, it's bloody complicated. And uh, what you need is somebody who can interpret that for you and who can do it with patience and commitment and courage. We've, we've, we've heard about courageous journalists, journalists here, here tonight. We've seen many. We'll see more. Uh, this is another courageous journalist, level-headed. But above all, above all else, it's about her objectivity. It's about her being a Lebanese woman who does not bring her own, so you can't call about tribal relations, but you know what I mean. She, it's not about her, um, her background. She analyzes very soberly, very funnily sometimes, and, and brilliantly. She also has the power to surprise us. In the last four or five years, She's become a best-selling author on a subject that's actually brilliantly chosen to, um, to illustrate not just the situation in Lebanon, but the situation across the, the Mashrik, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, these fraught relations that, uh, um, that are, um, well, it's what we spend all our time thinking about. And she chose the, the Jews of Beirut that disappeared tribe of people who lived in, a, in an area of Beirut called uh, Wadi Abu Jamil. And it started with, I think it was, a, it was probably a radio program that talked to, the, to, the, to the, these completely Lebanese people who were also Jewish, who had a very thriving... Uh, um, society in this higgledy-piggledy part of, uh, of old Beirut um, in, the, in the center of town who were, who were no longer there. And she started by talking to their, their Lebanese friends who remember their names, who have pictures of these people, who have anecdotes of these people, and, and now they're gone. And it was, a, it was an emotional radio program that then turned into an emotional book and then turned into a masterpiece documentary, which... I haven't said the, and the winner is, words yet, but I'm hoping we'll see some of it here. Now, uh, uh, I watched it again this morning, and everybody should watch it, actually. It's on the BBC website. About then, finally, the last link in the chain is to, is to find these people who were in Beirut, who are now in, might be in Tel Aviv, some of them are in Canada, others are in Mexico. These Lebanese-speaking culturally Lebanese people who are, 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 are Jews from Lebanon. Some are now Hebrew-speaking Israelis. Others chose not to go to Israel. It's a, it's a brilliant film. I urge you to see it. The author, the, 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 the brain, it is the brainchild of our next winner, who is... <laughs> قال إن لبنان جاهز لحرب أهلية في أي وقت واللافت أن تيار المستقبل سعى للملمة هذا الموضوع لماذا؟ 
حرب لبنان قضت على قلب بيروت التراثي والعديد من منازلها القديمة لكن مرحلة السلم لم تشهد محافظة على ما بقي من تلك المنازل ندى عبد الصمد بي بي سي I missed it last year. I made it this year. Thank you very much for that. And I'm so glad that my friend Martin presented me. I wish he'll come back soon and work in Lebanon. And as for my book, I wish you'll read it also soon in English. Uh, thank you very much.